Hey guys, welcome back to Jason and Joni Builds. We're in the shop today uh, installing our Tom's Bronco HD radiator. It's uh, basically, it's got two inch and a quarter cooling tubes and uh, it's basically the width of a four core radiator. It had good reviews, they had a good sale on it during uh, what the Black Friday sales, so I picked one up. We talked about it briefly a few weeks ago. I got my, my brackets in, my mounting brackets, I uh, ordered a set of brackets from Duff's. Uh, they had a nice looking set of stainless brackets. Uh, I'll show you those here in a minute. Anyways, uh, and then we're also going to install our Perfect Fit uh, condenser. I've ha had a few of you guys ask me to show how I would install it and I can see why because <laughs> the instructions are, are not very clear. So uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. It gives you a little bit of room to make it fit how you want it to fit. Anyway, so uh, we'll get started. All right, so I guess to start, we'll talk about the lower brackets. The Dennis Carpenter uh, grill support or radiator support I bought, they ship you the radiator brackets loose so you can install them where you need them. Well, that's okay if you have, if you've had a V8 in the past. Well, I didn't. And I wasn't real sure, you know, the exact location of these brackets. So I spent a little time with a buddy of mine's Bronco and just putting the radiator in here. And it's a really kind of straightforward. Again, this bracket, the lower part comes with the Dennis Carpenter. Uh, I had to get the, the four core radiator mounts or supports from Duff's. So you can get them from Tom's. Um, Duff is a little bit closer. The price is the same and uh, I was able to get them a little bit quicker so we could get this install done. I went ahead and mounted the lower support to the bracket so I could just sort of get it screwed to the support, the radiator support, and kind of make sure my fit's right before I weld it in. But I did have to make a little bit of adjustment on the bracket and I'll show you right in here. I don't know if you could tell, I had to taper the edges out because the radiator itself is a little bit wider. You, the, you'll have the piece of stock that is your mount and then the radiator itself gets a little bit wide and there's some welds there. So anyways, that's what this does. That little taper helps it fit. So I have the radiator upside down just to show you what I was talking about with the fit. With the, these welds where they weld the tank up. This gets a little wide right in here for these brackets. So, if you see now, before, right in here, they would hit. Now, it just sort of gets it away. It doesn't look like it, it would, but uh, I did have quite a bit of, it was too tight. I was afraid it was gonna rub a hole in the radiator. So I like that much better. So how I started with this was, I just first took me a measurement, uh, between my radiator supports, and that's that's where these big lugs are on the radiator. So I just took a center line measurement, and this one is about 19 and 3 eighths. So then with that, that needs to transfer to your frame. Let me get the other one here. So basically, you'll have 19 and 3 8 inches between the center of your two supports. Okay, well, so here's my modified radiator support. We'll, we'll talk about this area right in here. It, it should have a little, about a 3 quarter of an inch tab that runs the length on both sides, top and bottom, but I've cut them off. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, a good starting point when I looked at some other Broncos was the top of this support would be the top of the support to the top of this bracket here, to the lower brace. Well, when I did that, I was a little short and uh, we'll explain that in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and put two screws in here. Okay, as you can see, I'm about a quarter of an inch above the lower brace, my radiator support to the lower uh, horizontal brace here. So the reason I raised it up is 
They've already got pre-punched holes for your upper radiator support and it's slotted so you have a little bit of adjustment. Well when I had it, when I had that one down there flush mounted, I, w I didn't have enough adjustment. I would have had to slot this hole even more and I figured I would, instead of doing that, I would just raise the bottom up. That way it raises the radiator up to this so I get my adjustment back. All this is this little bit of uh, fitting that you're going to have to do. If you haven't done it, make sure you have your radiator. The radiator you're going to use, don't just do one that you have because sometimes everything isn't exactly the same. So we will, I'll set my radiator in here now and we'll get it uh, placed and get this bracket placed so we can get it spot welded. This bracket basically keeps your radiator stout. It keeps it from moving side to side. This kind of captures the upper brackets. All right guys, uh, Joni has stopped me real quick because again, I know this and she doesn't. And you know, she's, she's learning and she was kind of asking questions. I'm like, well, she brings, she brings up a good question. Why am I doing all this? Why didn't it come attached? Well, mine is a 66, the original six cylinder. The opening, the grill opening was smaller in the original. And this is the original radiator. And you can tell the original radiator mounted to the side of the radiator opening. So these new ones, uh, the newer style doesn't mount the same way. So that's why I don't have, I didn't have a reference point. And got to thinking some of you guys may be making this same modification and you'll understand why I'm having to do this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing set in. goes right down in the in the brackets as you see if you come across here jump and show them across the front basically the top of the radiator is level with the top of the of the Bronco there top of the radiator support so now these brackets and I showed you a little while ago where I had to cut them we had to do the same thing on the top was giving that little bit of flare. Oh, and something else, I'm sorry, is right in here I took my Dremel and I had to kind of uh, eat the rubber out a little bit on these, on just the back sides because if you look right in here, this area right in here with the rubber being so tight it wouldn't let the this support push down on it. But now once you get it in you can see how tight it is right in here on both sides. Now I can push it around that piece of stock and it'll hold the radiator in place like it's supposed to. So just a little little modification to make it work right. But uh, you can show them right here, Joni. Now with this push down, you can see I'm at the bottom of my hole where I need to be. Here's the other side. So now you can see why I brought those brackets up so I could get these pushed down on it. I didn't have to elongate my slots. The last thing we have to do for the radiator portion of this is our upper brackets. And basically, since I have them bolted up, I can slide these in place and see where they need to go. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install them with the top level with the top of this, uh, with the top of my radiator support. I don't have to worry about marking these or anything because I can take the radiator out, put the bracket back in place and just have it straight up and down, tighten it up. But uh, you get the idea with these. What I did is I just drilled four quarter inch holes and these will be my spot weld locations. So I can just spot weld it here and it'll be nice and seamless. I don't want to drill them in with screws because then you have a screw hole that I end up filling and you have to do grinding and cleanup on the other side. 
With this, we'll move to the condenser portion of our perfect fit system because the radiator's basically there. We'll get these uh, welded in a minute. Just when I take this all apart, then I'll weld it. I just don't want to stop, weld it, put it back together, and have to do this all again. All right, so here's our condenser for our perfect fit from Classic Autoware. First, I want to say this, this video is not sponsored. Uh, I've used Classic Autoware in the past. They're a good company. They have good systems. So when I tell you some things that I'm running across, it's not that I'm being harsh or I'm being mean. I'm telling you guys the truth. <laughs> Their instructions for installing this kit in the Bronco need overhaul. They, the instructions are terrible. I don't know why they couldn't spend an extra second and have full page printouts of the pictures because the pictures are so small, they're black and white, they're very dark, you can't see anything, and they don't really explain why they're doing something. So I had to spend a lot of time kind of fitting everything the best I can, trying to see what they're trying to convey. So if you buy this kit, I hope this helps you because the instructions, unless they change them, are pretty poor. This is how I installed it. We started off with a set of flat brackets. This is what they send you. I, I didn't see any good way to use those, how I'm putting this in with the radiator. Um, so what I did is I ended up, um, I still have to clean them up. So I ended up putting a 90 degree bend on my brackets and I'm going to use rivets to attach it and I'll clean this up and we'll repaint these but this was to get it to fit, right? So we put the 90 degree bend, we do that on both sides and then this is supposed to center the radiator and fall down in between the radiator and the core support. What they want is this condenser to be centered. So if Joni can kind of stand back and look without, with my arms in the way there, this condenser is the center of the radiator, basically center of the grill. And the brackets, I just didn't see how to make those work. So I had to make them work myself. One of the other things they don't tell you is to get this condenser in there, you have to trim this portion that I, I spoke about earlier, and I'm just gonna get my hand in here. You have to trim this portion of your core support out because there's no way that would have fit between my radiator and the front of this core support. So I have a, while I was out here working by myself, I did a quick little video of what I was gonna cut, so I'll insert that now. <laughs> the modification I had to make to the radiator support was right along the blue tape line there. So I'll have to cut the top and the bottom. Let's see if you can see in here. And basically what that does is it, you're cutting off the excess metal here. Basically it, it'll be in line with the back side of your supports that you're installing. That metal adds strength to the bottom portion of your radiator support. So what I'm gonna have to do is reinforce that once I get this cut out. I can put a piece of, uh, I've got some three quarter inch square tubing I'm going to lay inside there. I just feel like it needs it. They don't show this in the instructions, but it's the only way that condenser is going to be able to mount between the radiator and the radiator support, because that is way in the way. So I believe where that video le is left off, I cut those two pieces out. And what we need to do now is go back in and install a support because I, I want to make sure I have the strength back in that part and what I do is I what I did is I have a piece of uh, square tubing that we're going to install in that void and we'll spot weld it to the core support and then that also give me something for my lower mounts to screw to so my condenser will have a nice solid mount to the core support the radiator will be in and we'll be in good shape but one thing I'm going to have to do is remove the grill because I need to, I'm telling you guys, I'm, I'm sorry I'm having to think this through, but they give you templates, places where you, they want you to drill so you can put in your bulkheads and these fittings. I don't trust it because I'm, I basically had to put the condenser where I wanted to put it. So I'm going to mount the condenser. We'll take the grill off and then we can put this in and we can mark where once this is bolted to the condenser, we can mark where this needs to stick through 
the core support for the bulkhead connection. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side so it'll be much easier to do with the grill out. So we're going to pull the grill, pull the radiator back out, and we'll be right back. All right, so what I have here is a piece of three-quarter by three-quarter square tubing. It'll give me the, the strength I, I, I need or I feel like I lost when I cut those pieces out. And what I did is I've got it primed, and then I've got it uh, weld through primer on the front side. That way I can do my spot welds, and I won't have any problem with that. Okay, so this... This bar basically slide up underneath here. Like that. <clears throat> you okay? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes, that hurt. But uh, when your hands are cold and things aren't moving like they're supposed to, it hurts even worse. But anyways, it happens. So what I want to do is I want to take my drill and put a few holes down the core support here. And then we'll weld, I'll just spot weld this bar to it. And I'll probably go ahead and do one or two out front. Go ahead and get these holes drilled. So guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just clamp this in place. And then uh, I'll go ahead and spot weld it and spare you guys the, the fast montage of me <laughs> putting uh, spot welds in this thing. Alright guys, uh, we've got this all tacked in now. Oh, I welded in. So I uh, put my brackets back where they're supposed to be. I added some holes so I can weld those to the square tubing also. And I'm going to go ahead and get all this welded up. And that way I'll be done with this portion. Then we can mount our condenser and make a bracket that will screw into this lower piece of uh, square tubing. I figured while I had the welder, uh, while I got it out, I'm going to go ahead and weld this, the upper brackets in. And like I told you before, I, I just kind of got them real, real close to the top. And I'm just using this to make sure I've got it good and centered. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bracket because I don't want to get uh, spatter on my pretty mount there. Alright, so we've got our upper mounts, our lower mounts for the radiator are welded in now. So I'm not going to worry about grinding or anything right now. But again, this was that Z bracket I showed you I made earlier. work on a, a lower bracket. I'm just going to go ahead and put this in place. What this is guys is this uh, the condenser is at the same height as the radiator where this level is. The radiator is not in there right now but uh, just so if you're wondering where I position this and it's directly in the center of the radiator opening. And for me, that's just kind of OCD kicking in that I want, I want it to look consistent when you look through the grill and you see that black condenser sitting in that radiator so it's not sitting off kind of crooked. These are the other brackets that uh, comes with perfect fit. Again, I don't, you know, looking at their instructions, I couldn't really tell exactly how they wanted you to use them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to screw it to the front side. That's what these holes are for. And they come with real short screws that you can attach the bracket to this portion of your condenser. And then I can drill straight into this tubing. And that'll this thing will be locked down nice and tight. I'm just going to cut half of this bracket off. I don't need all that extra material. 
So I'll go cut those off and attach it to the condenser and we'll come back. So here's the brackets I cut off. And basically, like I said, it comes with just real short screws and you can screw them to the back side there. Now, I'll take some self-tapping screws and we'll get it placed. And then when I put it back in right now, these are, these are just the same ones I use putting the body together. I'll put some stainless steel screws in it you know, on final assembly, but at least it gets a hole and it, and it has a home. That gets our condenser mounted. So what we need to do next while we have the grill off is go ahead and locate our holes for the bulkhead fittings and then we can wrap this video up. Okay, so the way this is supposed to work is this will go in here and they give you a template where they want you to drill it. Well. Anywhere where this was going to go was going to be right into this uh, portion that uh, Dennis Carpenter kind of hollows out for your power steering box. Some of the boxes actually will protrude into this area, but I've had my, my power steering box in it, and it's actually pretty flush. It doesn't, it doesn't need this area. So, again, I don't know if that is a, a box-specific thing or not, but... Uh, Ours doesn't need that area, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change this angle. I want this to bend up just a little bit so my bulkhead is, so my fitting actually comes through right in here somewhere, rather than right in the middle of this bend. Because if you can tell, it's sort of hard to hold it right where it's supposed to be, but it'll be right in here. So what I'm going to do is try to protect this tube it's aluminum, so it's gonna it should bend pretty easy, but I just don't want to mark it up real bad around the nuts. So I just got this old rag in there. Just put a little bit of pressure on my vise. I basically want to move it about 10 degrees without collapsing or twisting the tube. Or let's go see what that looks like. So since I, I twisted this up, we're off of this now, and we're, I don't want to keep twisting on it. So I, I, I typically wouldn't want it to go through this right here, but that's where we're going to go with it right now. The, the thing is, is where exactly does this hole go? Because I know as it swings in, the hole's actually going to move back towards the radiator. So... Right now I'm kind of eyeballing where center line is and hopefully I'll be pretty close right here. All right, so you see now we've got our, our line in. I had to give it just a little tweak right in here and open the hole up side to side a little bit because just it being a straight hole and dealing with this kind of made it pretty tough just making it go through. And it needs to move because that bulkhead is uh you have another fitting your your line from your compressor comes in and ties to it on the firewall side so anyways this is how this needs to be now and we'll go ahead and get our second line placed i'm basically going to do the same thing is pull the little plug off here just a little cap. We'll set this one. This one's a little more straightforward. It comes off, it goes through the OCD part. I just want this to be straight.
Okay, as you can see, this one went in much easier. And uh, it looks nice. So I will go ahead and set the radiator back in it and let you guys see it uh, as an assembled unit. Alright guys, so hopefully this has been somewhat of a help <laughs> to anybody that's putting in the perfect fit AC system or putting in a new radiator. But uh, to me it looks really good. Um, everything's nice and straight. It, it looks consistent. So that's, uh, that's a big thing done. Before we fit any more of the hoses, I really need the engine and the Bronco. So this kind of gets most of the holes fit. So we're going to stop here on the AC system today. Uh, basically just trying to get uh, a lot of this stuff up front done. Uh, there's a few more components that we need to put on before we can put the hoses, but then the engine needs to be in before we can uh, fit the hoses and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, this is just uh, another piece of the puzzle. So we hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I uh, know this has been long, but uh, quite a few steps to get this thing right. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Y'all have a great day. Take care.